Hello everybody, and welcome back to episode 3 of Code's Corner main K2 universe. This is episode 3. Uh, I'm joined today by the Imperator. <laughs> Greetings. And uh, Mr. McFunkster, who is back after his previous hiatus, which is always fun. Yeet. Um, let's see, last time we left off... Um, Helsing and Bostonbrook were tasked with, uh, essentially clearing out, um, another mansion, only to find that it had, uh, also been taken over by a cult, or the, the same cult, and rather than try to fight the animated suits of armor and the weird space worm, uh, Helsing opted to detonate what was essentially like an antimatter bomb. Antimaterial bomb, if I'm yeah, correct. Yeah, and uh, like wipe out the entire area. There was some uh, yeah. inter-team drama. Uh, Helsing finally put his foot down and called out uh, Ms. Lafferty's ineptitude in her leadership abilities and got her laid off for a little while. So she will be also taking a hiatus as our handler. Yeah, she's... Uh, no longer with us for the moment. Unfortunately. And, but it but must... You, yeah, you did, <laughs> it was a necessary sacrifice. You did keep her from getting fired, so... You know, it could have been worse. I did. Exactly. See? She can chalk that victory up to me. Yeah. She still has a job to come back to. And, uh... We that does sound... Kind, yeah, kind of... Kind of... You know. Wow. <laughs> uh, kind of... Kind of <laughs> sucking my own dick here. Yeah, but you know you're allowed to. You're you like, you know, nuked in part of the rich part of New Orleans. So exactly. Um, let's see. We met one of the other members of the high high like high council of the JPCU, uh, Ms. Lena Graff, a fine Irish woman. Mm. Um, and then we believe we left off with Helsing's moral code being questioned after realizing that not everybody wants to be alive. <laughs> This is true. Yes. Uh, yeah, Boston Brook is uh, a sad boy. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably been uh, a couple of days now since our previous mission. Um, because, of course, the company has to totally reshift the handlers and stuff because of the McLafferty's uh, newfound absence. Yes. Um, so This is... This is, like, crazy to think about, but this all happens just within, like, the span of, like, a couple days. Yeah, I believe we're on, like, day day four, probably, of this whole catastrophe. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, so, once again, we've all been assembled at the, uh, the headquarters of JBCU, um, by, you know, not in person, but, like, Milafferty always came to us in person. She would knock on our front doors and have them pick us up, uh, but this time... No such case, because of course mm. she is uh, on unpaid vacation at the moment. So we just get a, an email, you know, summoning all of us to the the headquarters at some point. Yeah. Well, I don't leave there, so. Well, yeah, you so live there, so. They would have just like come down and told me, and so does X. Yeah. <laughs> he lives in the. X kind of can't leave. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we've been all, uh, summoned, summoned back to the headquarters, and by summoned, I mean only really Boston Brook <laughs> gets summoned. Yeah. Um. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, and, uh we're so I'm going to... the conference room. Yeah, I'm going to be sitting in there with a small notepad jotting down notes of what's happened, and I'm going to be trying to kind of sketch one of, like, the impossible beings that we encountered. And, uh, like, kind of make an artistic mock-up of, like, the worm and, like, the, the the one that Battlecock had so graciously killed. All right, yes, yeah, so you, you, you know, jot down that stuff, and it, it kind of calls back to that nightmare you had last episode where you envisioned that gigantic writhing mass of, like, flesh... Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
during during this uh, during this uh, meeting, I'm going to bring that up. You're gonna bring up the the rising uh, mass of tentacles you dreamt of. Yes, I'm gonna be bringing that up to uh, <laughs> the members of the team. Cool. Well, after you probably only waited for like five ten minutes, and then they wheel. Uh, X in on the gurney, the battlecock like sitting on his lap. <laughs> in the <laughs> chair. Is he is he like trying to pet it? Yeah, he probably really can't because he's like chained to the wheelchair, but he's still trying his best. <laughs> and uh, that's funny. Now that um, of course last episode, uh, X's absence was explained with the idea that he was being sort of like tested by the the councils um, to kind of determine if he was like safe enough to be used in the field. So they have decided, mm. you know, mostly a well, way to quote. Yeah, mostly. Um, so yes, yeah, so they, they wheel him in and then like the um, the nurse or whatever that like led him in here kind of like nods to, yeah. to Helsing and then promptly uh, speed walks out of the room. I'm just going to keep sat at the table and uh, keep attempting to draw this impossible figure that I saw in my dream. All right. Um, make a sanity check for me. Okay. Which should not be too difficult uh, if you're pretty sane. All right. Four. Sanity of ten. Yep, you're good, okay. So as you uh, try to draw this this thing that you, that you dreamt of previously, you find your, your mind drifting into uh, more and more kind of strange, like like intrusive thoughts sort of deal, but you manage to resist yeah. them you know, easily enough. Very nice, very nice. Is everybody else gonna have to make a sanity check to view? Look at it, yeah. Oh no! Except for X is already insane. <laughs> He's immune. Okay. Um, but yes, probably another ten minutes goes by, and uh, Boston Brook walks in through the door in his, uh, mm -hmm. his trench coat and his wide brim fedora, uh, and accompanying him is another man dressed similarly to how McLafferty used to. That is to say, it's a, a black suit, undershirt, black tie, um, you know, uh, expression. I see. And uh, him and Boston Brooks seem to have been chatting it up previously as they uh, walked into the room together. And, uh, you know, they both walk up to the table. Boston Brooks takes his seat. And uh, the other gentleman walks over to the front of the table and puts down... Uh, a tablet and uh, kind of looks over this the motley crew of um, random idiots that he's, he's now in charge of for two weeks yeah yeah JVH has definitely seen better days you can say that much yeah so uh, the handler kind of looks over everybody and he just kind of like like sighs does he have, does he have a name? what does he have a name? Yeah, so he introduces himself as uh, Agent Matthew Wright. <laughs> okay. Uh, you probably uh, haven't heard of him uh, as like an employee, just because he's not like Ms. Lafferty's the head agent. She's pretty high on the like totem pole. This dude is just like a normal handler. Grunt. Yeah. Grunt level handler. Yep. So JVH is really not gonna uh, like dignify him with a response mainly because one he probably knows who i already am yeah. and two just too much on my mind and uh, hmm but uh yeah no so jason's just gonna sit there and and ponder this impossible being that he's looking at right now all right so 
Yeah, so you just kind of like sit there and you know scowl at the, the you know, poor replacement for McLafferty. Um, and after like a good minute of just absolutely like dead quiet, minus you know Battlecocks every once in a while his like cluck of satisfaction and contentment, um, <laughs> it's dead quiet in this room. <laughs> like, like like the only real sounds are Battlecocks clucking and Boston Brooks sipping at uh, spiked coffee and tea and and the occasional whir of the generators yeah like the like buzzing of the the lights up above you <laughs> yeah because it's, it's hot in the world it's, you know oh yeah and the ac is like on full blast of course um and after for like a good two minutes of awkward staring at each other uh right like clears his throat and he kind of uh you know takes out his like manila folder of photos and he's like well pleasure to be working with you gentlemen um i'm only gonna be here for a few weeks so don't have to be you know get get used to me just yet he takes out a satellite image of what looks like uh, a ruined castle and he slides it across the table to you and I'm written, gonna written in like big load. like red lettering across the top of the image is Raven's uh, Raven Downs Keep. I'm gonna like slowly take up the picture and like inspect it. It looks like a castle that has seen uh, way better days. Um, none of it is really standing. The only one of the towers is in any kind of operational shape and all the buildings are collapsed the walls are in shambles the main gate is okay. longer functioning um and uh there's a very very faint glow of magical radiation coming from the well of the property hmm all right i'm going to uh Look over to this handler, mm -hmm. who JVH probably wouldn't even remember the name of. No, he probably wouldn't uh, care. <laughs> just because he's that, like, un unremarkable of a person. Yeah. Just a generic dude, I'd assume. Uh, and he's going to say, uh, he's going to turn to him and uh, ask, Have you taken the proper time to make sure that this is properly sealed off. Um, and uh, Wright looks to looks to you and he goes, yes, sir, uh, we've learned from uh, the last fiasco and have already secured the area with you know magic force fields and JPC has already cordoned the area off from, from the public. The property is pretty much secure, except for, of course, JPC used soldiers. I would hope to expect that if there were anyone on the premise they, premises they are already in custody uh, it appeared to have been long abandoned when we arrived um, and we aren't sure why the Chamberlain family even owns this place since it seems like nobody's lived there for like a hundred years mm, very good all right That's it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's, he explains that the Chamberlain family owns his ruined castle in the middle of nowhere, um, probably a couple like hours outside of the of, of the city. But they have no hmm. idea why exactly they own this place because there seems to be no attempts to maintain the property whatsoever. Hmm. Like the trees are all overgrown, you know, the lawns have, haven't been cut in decades, you know, it's very odd. Interesting. Yes. So internally, uh, JVH is going to come up with a theory, uh, and that theory is going to be, uh, what if uh, there's no need to upkeep it because their goal there was already completed? That's a sound enough assumption to make. Um, 
but yeah so write like hands hands you the like a, a you know notepad or like a sticky note with the address on it and says we've already you know got the area under control but we 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 need like investigators to go there and check out and make sure like double check there's not anything fishy going on hmm And, uh, yeah, there's and, a, uh, uh, a car waiting in the, the lower garages. Okay. All right, well. Off we are, then. All righty, then. Uh, uh, yeah, so we all head into the, the, uh, the garages, get in our armored car, and, uh, take the drive to this ruined castle. So on the way there, yeah. uh, JVH is going to have his, uh, have his uh, red sunglasses on, and he's going to be uh, swirling, just, just swirling and taking occasional sips of a glass of red wine, like just staring off into like uh, nothing really. Uh, just kind of zoning out. Yeah, so you can you can do that. Um, they would have taken uh, X out of his many restraints, so he actually get in the vehicle. <laughs> so he's he's there, with Battlecock in his lap, chilling. I'm just gonna pet Battlecock for the duration of this ride. <laughs> that's all I need. Yeah, yeah that's the only companion you need. <laughs> and uh, Bossenbrook has like a his flask of, of whiskey. He just sips from casually. And, uh, yeah, so a few hours go by, and we, we, we make it to this old ruined castle that sits against the, uh, the coast. The, like, like the wall, like, is right up against the ocean. Um, and, uh, yeah, it seems in like total ruin like the right. walls are crumbled and covered in moss and the stone blocks are eroded and it's just a crumbling mess so jv just gonna like look up at the uh at the uh castle and like what's left of it and he's just gonna scoff and like just say what a waste you know it was probably once beautiful in its youth and uh very 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 attractive looking to the eye so yeah that's what jvh is gonna do once he gets out and inspects the uh the castle itself yeah so the the car you know parks back both the other JPC vehicles. You take the, the short hike uh, into the property, um, really, and uh, yeah, the, the front gate is flanked uh, on two other sides by huge, uh, well, it probably used to be like the the inner the workings of the portcullis, but the tower has <laughs> collapsed entirely and only like a couple dozen feet worth of stone blocks remain from, from what was probably like 50 feet of tower. Ah, the poor cause is totally gone. Yeah. Yikes! So while we're walking into this castle area, JVH is going to keep his hand on his hilt uh, of his story. Reader. Cool. Uh, just because you know previous experiences. Yeah. Um... And whatnot. Uh. So, yeah, yeah. so you walk through the uh, ruined, like, main archway of this castle, uh, following the, uh, dis the disheveled stone pathway that kind of leads from the, the property line to here, uh, Stone Road. Mm. And you enter into what appears to be the, the main, or what used to be the main square of this, this castle. There looks like the ruins of a temple off to the, to the left um, judging by like the big arched 
windows with like bits of colored glass in it. And then to your right mm. are uh, presumably the rest of the the buildings in this. Mm. And then farther up at the end of the path is what looks like the hole for a well, but the wooden part appears to have totally eroded away. So I'm going to look at the, uh, the, the, the scanned picture that uh, I think his name was Matthew gave me. Yeah, so that image shows the only evidence of any magic appears to be coming from the well. All right. So I'm going to look at the, the picture and look back at the well. And uh, I'm going to... Are, are there, like, guys with us? Um, there, if, if you wanted to bring companions, there could have been, yeah, but not automatically. Mm. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, radio in then and uh, tell the men to secure the outside of the well. Sure. You and then, uh, into, uh, the, the commander over back at the normal command area, and, mm -hmm. uh, they send some, some guys in. It's a protected team. There would be, uh, there would be, uh, SCP guys here, right, too? Uh, yes, there are <clears throat> a number of Foundation vehicles and trucks and stuff that are, like, parked alongside the JPCU vehicles. Very nice, very nice. Uh, but uh, yeah. a, few, a few minutes goes by and the JPCU units show up to secure the uh, hole in the ground, essentially. Mm. So, I'm going to turn to everybody else and uh, get a consensus going. Where does everybody else suggest that we go? To be honest, I don't even know what we're looking for. JVH is just going to have a, like a, a sharp inhale and realizing like what was missing from the last time and what has returned since last time. <laughs> <laughs> and take a sigh. <laughs> and uh, Boston Buck, he, uh, while, while you're kind of you know, pondering your real reasoning for ever having suggested bringing uh, Demon Warlock along with you. Um, yeah. Boston Brook yep. has since, like, wandered over to the well and is, like, chatting up the guards over there. I'm just going to give out, like, one of, one of those, like, loud horse whistles. Um, <laughs> so Boston Brook yeah, hears you and then, like, turns around and, like, calls out, like, Yes. <laughs> Opinion, direction. Mm -hmm. And then you see him, he points into the, 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 like down in the well, and he goes, I think I see some light from down there. <sighs> well, we'll work our way down. So you want to descend the well? Not yet. We'll make our way there. Okay, so where do you Chances wanna... are... Chances are we could probably find a way in from the main building. Knowing the track record of these places. You I say we take the main building first and then work our way down to the well. Alright, the main building is all the way uh, in like the far uh, right of the the gate against the, the, the thick stone walls and ah, probably okay. like 80% of the building is just entirely gone like the mm. the floors are totally covered over with grass there's no ceiling most of the walls are gone there's no doors no furniture it's just like a couple of stone walls some piles of old rubble and like what appears to have been at one point um, like a throne mm. But all of the wood in it is gone, leaving only like the the gold parts left, essentially. I see. Yeah. All right. 
Well, I'm going to start looking for clues. Um. Uh, hmm. So I'm yeah, going to make my sure. make being... me make me a perception check. All right. Nice. Uh, uh, gets that's... too caught up, um, sitting on the throne and pretending to be a king that he forgets to check anything. <laughs> that definitely <laughs> sounds like a helsing thing to do. Not pretending yeah. to be a king, I I take a moment, sit on the throne, and get like lost in thought. I wonder if your office has one of these. <laughs> I'm going to to not even acknowledge it because I'm just completely zoned out. Uh, Brook, he gets a 10 on his perception check. So, uh, as Helsing like, sits over on the throne and gets lost in thought, uh, being simultaneously berated by the warlock, um, Boston Brook uh, trips on a ritual dagger. <laughs> oh! Oh! How obvious! And then, uh, like, his, like, oh, the is, like, sticking out of the grass, and he, like, tripped over it, and, uh, he kind of yanks the dagger out of the ground, and pulls a part of a rib cage out of it with like a Oh. Huh. What did uh, the warlock man get? On my perception? Yes. You know I rolled a dead. one. Nice. Oh. <laughs> so well today. <laughs> uh, Fabulously, I you're assure suffering you. suffering along with me. Yeah, the warlock man he gets is lost in the battle. ego of uh, Dr. Helsing to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> While petting Battlecock. Yeah, and in the in the meantime, Bossbrook has found a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do I do I notice that? Yeah, well, because Bossbrook is like, do oh, like... this might be of importance, and he pulls out this. It's like one of those like like swir like swirly daggers. Um, oh, I know what you're like, talking about. A rib jammed in it. That's hmm. interesting. Well, it looks like what we've thought to be true is true. The place as well has had cultists in the past. Whether they're here or not now is yet to be seen. Um, as a, do you want to like investigate the corpse at all, or? Yes. Or, okay, so make yeah. me. I want to look at the knife. Make me your perception checks then. You realize X, that you can you can do these checks in the game. I mean, I do, but I have physical yeah. dice, so I'm gonna roll there them. Go. I also so physical dice. You so. investigate the yeah. corpse and find that it's been um, covered over in like a layer of like moss. Hmm. So you kind of like peel away like the sod and stuff. And you find that the I'm going uh, to... the skull is adorned with a crown. I'm going to uh, take a sampling of the moss, sure. just because plot, and uh, and then inspect the crown. Uh, the crown is uh, beaten up, kind of smushed. Like on one side, it's kind of like ovular instead of circular. Um, and uh yeah it's got some some like jewels embedded into it it looks like a, a, a an old king's crown is there uh i'm gonna use my detect magic and sure. try and see if this holds any magical properties like i think it might uh roll the check for that is it blue perception this would be a perception, yes. Yes. Six. Perception of eight. So you, uh, you know, open your third eye, if you will, your magical eye, to the presence the of this eye. crown. You find <clears throat> that this crown, uh, you don't know what, like, effect that this thing has, but it is cursed, whatever it is. I'm going to, like, as soon as, like, can I pinpoint the curse? 
like that it's no. like I, I I like hold this thing in my hands and like uh, use my detection. Um, um, you when can I tell find that it appears to be like it doesn't appear to be like an instant effect curse. Like it's not like you put it on and it lights you on fire. It appears to be um, a, a a continuous effect. A decay. Yeah. Okay. So it's got a magical half life on it then. Oh jeez. Uh. And then what did so, uh, what did the warlock get on his check? I get a four. Four. Perception of seven. Like the dagger, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a it's a really ornamental, curvy dagger. Um, it it has like some like really really old brown dried blood on most of the blade, um, and it's embedded in like the 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 rib, but like the part of the rib that connects to the spine. Not the front of the rib. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. So I assume someone was backstabbed. I wonder if it was, you know, metaphorical as well. More than likely. Uh, so I'm going to... I would have, like, specimen bags on me, assumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and like, like little, stuff. little vials and yeah. petri dishes and that. So I'm going to take out a vial. I'm going to put the sample of the moss in the vial and then screw the cap shut. And then I'm going to take out one of the bags mm -hmm. and put the crown in the bag and put it in my satchel. Alrighty. <clears throat> I will put the... Or, well, put them both in my satchel. Yeah. This is cursed crown. And this is vial of moss, corpse moss. <laughs> oh, Keto, right. I'll put these in your inventory for you. Thank you, thank you. Is that going to be pertinent to this game? Uh, I will not say. Oh, Joy, the, the love of secrecy has returned. It has. Did you miss it? <laughs> ah, not at all! <laughs> um, uh, gotta love the fog of war. Yeah, so uh, what does... Metaphorical and literal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, uh, anything else uh. with this body? Gonna look over anymore, look over the dagger anymore? You know. I'm gonna uh, can I detect magic on the dagger? Yeah, that would uh -huh. be a perception check as well. While he's doing that, I am going to uh, inspect this skull. Another four. Another four. Okay, so you look over uh, the dagger. It, um, mm -hmm. it isn't cursed. Um, it does appear to have some kind of very, very, like ancient, decayed, weak magical residue on it. <clears throat> um, so this is probably hmm. some kind of magic or another, but it seems to have more or less worn away. It's just like time. Oh, so it just faded? It wasn't, like, used? Um, well, you don't know. could probably assume both, seeing as it's in a rib of the, the, some, you know, king or another, but for sure, mm -hmm. it's been a couple hundred years since we last like seen the light of day, so probably both. All right. And you wanted to look over the skull of the dead dude. Yes, I would like to look over the skull of the dead king. Uh, sure. Make me a perception check. All right. It's gonna be a five. So you uh, dig away some more at the the moss, and you pry the skull from its place, uh, having been like more or less absorbed into the earth. Mm. And it appears to be more or less intact, minus the total lack of flesh 
Um, okay. But uh, you hear um, sloshing coming from inside the skull. So I'm going to, like, tilt the skull downwards, like, so that the eyes and nose sockets are facing the ground. Like, just shake it around. Um, after a few seconds of jiggling this skull maraca, um, <laughs> you, that's terrible. <laughs> you end up, um, <laughs> you see, uh, two s- small streams of black ichor run from the skull's nose. I'm going to look up to Boston Rook, like just very slowly. And dramatically? Yes. It's gotta be dramatic. <laughs> dun dun dun. Yeah. Basically. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to I think look up to him and like just nod ever so slightly. Uh indicating that we do have a problem here. Uh yeah, Boston Brook, he's he's like well. I believe that confirms our previous suspicion. We are indeed looking at the same cult from before. But all the signs here point. This being... Years ago. Do you mean to tell me that they started this plan well before we even knew about them? It appears likely, yes. This does worry me. We are dealing with something much bigger than we would have thought. It was a good decision to bring the bring another agency into this. Uh, and as you as you say that, you hear um, some like foundation guys arguing with JPCU guys. <laughs> I'm gonna come over to the like come over the radio, and uh, like kind of warn them. Keep it down, or I will come over. There. We have a threat on our hands. The safety of the world is more important than bickering right now. Uh, you hear the argument stop immediately. We're working together, not against each other. But for how long? Excuse you? Until I decide to make somebody shoot somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> There's the answer. Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna make this easy, are you? Of course not. Um, I'm sure. So yeah. So any anything else in the the main building, or are we going to move on to somewhere else? Uh, we should try to find a secret passage. Sure. Give me perception check at disadvantage. All around, all around, everybody. Yeah. Two. And a five. So you get a two. That's a little passive. Your your perception is eight, right? Yes. Okay, so that's a pass. Boss of Brook. He gets four. Okay. So he gets the four. So he's I think that's also a pass for him. And then what does Warlock Boy get? Two. Yeah. Two? That's a fail? So that's your disadvantage then. <laughs> yeah. What's your perception? I believe it's a seven, isn't it? Seven, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. a fail. That's that's a that's also a fail. So, Boston Brook and so so uh, Demon Warlock Man uh, uh, becomes too absorbed in like Petty Battlecock to really search about oh, this passage my because God. he knows. Like, the well is obviously the other answer anyway, so why bother? But, yeah. So he's too lazy to look for the, the passage. But, uh, Helsing and Boston Brook, they wander into a separate room of this main keep, and, uh, it appears to have previously been, like, a scribe's like quarters or a record keeping area or like a All right. something like that because there are like old ruined like metal shelving units and stuff 
uh, against the mm. pretty much entirely collapsed wall. And I'm gonna you, uh, take pull, out my lighter. You you pull one of the um. So then, hey, okay, yeah, just, okay, so you walk into this room, and there uh, is only one shelf that's still kind of intact, and on that shelf there is only one book still there. Well, that would seem ominous, bad. isn't it? He says, "Patty, Patty, Battlecock." <laughs> that would make it seem pretty obvious, I would think. I'm yeah. gonna take out my lighter and uh, light it as a source of light. Is there a candle in here? Um, there are old candle holders, but they would have rotted away by this point. Hmm. All right. Well, then the lighter will have to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to the book and pull it. Uh, you hear an ominous like gear grinding cranking sound. As and then the uh, few like seconds later, the uh, bookshelf kind of like pops forward a little bit and then swings to the side to reveal a descending staircase downwards into the darkness. Well, none of us are getting any younger. You know, I feel like I'm getting deja vu. <laughs> I'm just going to give a glance over to X and kind of like stare daggers. Because I am obviously not in the mood. Um, but I'm going to smile back with the widest grin I can manage. I'm going to I'm going to start walking down. All right. So you uh in the staircase, Bossenberg falls after you. Um, you go down probably a couple dozen yards into the darkness before mm. arriving. You hear. Oh, boy. And this is the, the staircase that, like, goes up. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, before we go down, uh -huh. I'm going to have, uh, Boston Brook, uh, try to prop the door with something. Um, he's gonna make a check. Or, 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 or like, try to, try to put something there to, like, a, a branch or something uh, to try and, like, keep <laughs> that door open. He rolled a 10, so you tell him to prop the door open. He draws life's limit and cuts the mechanism in half. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, now the door cannot be shut unless from outside yep. interact. Very good. All right. Well, down we go. All righty. So you enter into room numero uno. Indeed. Uh, room numero uno. <clears throat> so the the ceilings here are pretty low um, for you because you're a pretty big boy. Um, mm. There are lit torches uh, in the the four like squarey bits over Corners. here, um, and okay. they are lit. Uh, there's no furniture though, no no people. Just an empty room. Just yeah, an empty an empty stone hall. All right, very well, very well. Uh, well, I say we take the left path. The left path, okie dokie. So you do you go into uh, three or two? I'm gonna say two for now. Two, okay. You go into. All right, so two, um, this room is drastically fancier than the previous one you were just in. The walls are uh, very well maintained. The, there's a big uh, like chandelier of candles in the center of the room hanging from the ceiling. And the walls are covered in really large like Renaissance era portraits 
of uh, men, women, and children. And there are plaques, like bronze plaques under each portrait. <coughs> and they all have the same last name of Chamberlain. So, JVH, uh, being a natural lover of the arts and the Renaissance, and him wishing that he can go back there, he's going to inspect them and make the comment of, uh, well, seeing as everything is still lit, we can still see down here, I would assume that people have been here recently. Uh, Boston Brook. Keep uh, on your toes. You it would appear that we are not alone. Yeah, so Boston Brook, he's like, yeah, that would seem that way. Uh, and yes, yeah, so you look at the paintings, and they appear to be all uh, Chamberlain family family members going back since probably the like 1920s, 1910s. It's each. Uh, so I just each, had an idea. Each male, like each, each like uh, mother and father of the family gets their own portrait. Ah. Uh, so JV is just gonna have an idea. Strike him. Uh, he's going to inspect the borders of the painting. Okay. Give me a perception check. Okay. My dice. Oh. Use the fancy rolling tile this time. <laughs> Come on. Um, Come on. So you do manage to uh, find that the only painting that is not well maintained is that of uh, Robert Chamberlain, the man that you are currently here to avenge, essentially. Um, all the, all, the, all the other paintings are in perfect, pristine condition, but his is torn and ripped and partially, like, like the frame is, like, bent off the wall a little bit, and it's, like, totally damaged right. and destroyed. Uh, interesting. I'm going to take a good look over his portrait. Let me see if I can. Hmm. Family drama. <laughs> I'm gonna take a good look over his portrait and see if I can't find anything to do with uh, any kind of secret entrance or a switch or a lever. Uh, okay, so you kind of peel away uh, the rest of the frame that was like already partially hanging off the wall and. On the back of the portrait, as you, like, you just, like, gen like barely push it aside, and the nail in the wall gives out, and it falls to the floor. Um, and on the back of the portrait, like, the cardboard backing is, uh, scribbled heretic. Hmm. Well, it seems there's our answer. Intriguing. So do we see this doorway right here? Yeah, this, yeah, you see this. This is there. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna turn to everybody else and suggest that we keep moving. Yeah, sure. Boston Book, Boston Book uh, agrees with that. We're gonna go right into room seven. All righty. So this. Uh, side of the wall, this one here, is, uh, it was, this was very high ceilings for the previous ones you've seen, and that whole, uh, smaller part of the wall is covered in a gigantic tapestry, mm. and I need everyone except for the warlock to make sanity checks. <laughs> <laughs> That is an 8 for me. Watch got a 9. So we're all safe. Does Battlecock need to do these? I've forgotten. Let me see. Battlecock. Well, I would assume he can't comprehend it. 
Well, it depends on what personality he has right now. So let's roll for personality, shall we? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna roll a d10. Yep. Alrighty. Um, that is a five. So he is a martial arts master at the moment. Uh, so he has his sanity of five. So roll me a sanity. Hmm. Okay. Good thing I'm not rolling. That's that. a ooh. That's a what? Four. Four. <clears throat> Four. Okay. So he fails. Just that. a bare fail. Yeah, it's a bare fail. Anything it's, above a five would have passed. Yeah. His. Let's see. Battlecock's sanity level uh, for his martial arts master is now a four instead of a five. Hmm. What effect is applied? <clears throat> Nothing about him. He's he's still sane. He's just barely sane. Uh, but what happens to him? Uh, he becomes like, visibly disturbed is... at the uh, like the the tapestry. The tapestry is um a depiction of the horrifying, gigantic writhing mass of grossness that uh, so so like uh as soon as jvh sees this um he's going to open up his uh journal that he was like scribbling in like frantically flip to the page and air it to the tapestry and see that it is it is exactly the same as like what he drew well, the the tapestry, um, as you so what you like, you look at it. We all look at it. Battlecock is disturbed and clucks uh, angrily at the tapestry. Um, as you go into your your bag to uh, get your notebook out, and you you get your notebook and you look back at the tapestry, you see that the the image is different than what you when it, what it was when you looked away. So as soon as he looks back from his journal, uh, he's gonna like, like, tremble like a little bit, and drop the journal. So you drop like, the journal, and the notebook falls open to the last page that you had opened, which was the one depiction of the horrifying outer, outer deity, and you see that the image in your notebook now matches the tapestry. He's gonna like touch the tapestry to like make sure that it's like metaphysical. Make me and not... an endurance check for touching the tapestry. At disadvantage. Ooh, how strange! So that's a especially if you pass, right? You have pretty high endurance. Uh, my endurance is seven. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you touch the tapestry and you feel um. A strange, like you, you, that the feeling you, the, the prodding at your mind you felt when the space worm was like attached to you, to you, like in your body, you feel that it's, same feeling. It's now. like an impossible feeling, right? Like yes. an impossible or a feeling of something impossible. Yes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna touch this tapestry and like try to comprehend like what I'm feeling currently uh and and try to like make make sense of of what's going on make me an intelligence check at disadvantage i hate you <laughs> i hate you i hate you <laughs> i hate uh, you <laughs> you are uh over overwhelmed with sensory information and the inexplicable nature of this event, and you take a couple of steps back from a tapestry, and like babble nonsense for a few seconds. Uh, as you look down at your hand and see that um, the the fingers you use to touch the tapestry are now uh, have little black tendrils, like weaving through it. So in in a flurry of panic, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a. Uh, Story Weaver and cut off my hand. You 
<laughs> sure. Uh, I don't know how much damage that would be, but... Uh... Uh, I would assume, since I'm doing it to myself, uh, that would be probably... And it's just my hand. Yeah, just your hand. So I'd say... 1d12 times 10. It's either that or 1d20 times 10. Uh, 1d12. We'll make it. We'll make it that means only only a hand. Yeah, it is only a hand, and I am doing it to myself in a frenzy. Anyway, so it'll, it'll, grow, it'll, it'll, it'll grow back in like an hour. Hundred and ten. Wow. Okay. Nice. So you're now down to one hundred and ninety health. Yeah. But you do regenerate. And I'm gonna so... like. I'm gonna like hold the the, the stub wrist. Now, uh, and await regeneration. Let's see, regeneration. Four, one d four times ten health per turn. So basically, every room you will regain one d four times ten health. So I'm gonna. I'm you gonna, know, you should really get that checked out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like snap to X, and like give him like a crazed. Angered look. What? I'm just saying. And, and like my breathing is like shaky as I hold like my wrist. Uh, make me a luck check for me, Melon, would you? Uh, who? Uh, Helsing. Ah. Holy, <laughs> that's not good. What's your uh, five? Five. Wonderful. So. So I don't. Completely fail, but I'm like just below that requirement. Yeah. So what happens? Uh, so you look to Warlock Man, and as you kind of like recover from that weird, like horrifying deja vu of cosmic horror, uh, Boston Brook points to the floor um, and yells. Uh, like space worm. Cause it's space worm. I'm gonna stab my hand. Cause assumably it's coming from my hand. It is your hand, yes. Okay, I'm gonna stab my hand straight through. Uh, sure. Give me the damage of your sword, which is. Uh, that would be. 2d100. Give me a second. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff on here. Uh, uh, that would be 2d100. Yep. Uh, 2. Yep. Here is that dice. Yeah, so this is going to be times 2 because it is against other paranormals. Yeah. Seventy and twenty. That's ninety. Oh, Seventy times twenty. Yes, yeah, so that's that's one hundred and forty damage. Uh, so you stab your hand through, uh, and the very, very. This is a very small space worm, uh, much smaller than the one that you fought uh, previously. And you stab it through, and it dissolves into black ichor and dies. <coughs> So after that, I'm going to do like a, a little flick of my sword, and then shoot it. Cool. Hmm. And take like a deep sigh as I pick up my journal and put it back. You pick up your journal, uh, and you see that both the tapestry and the notebook now look different than they did like 20 seconds ago. But still match each other. I'm going to take out uh, my lighter of evil. And I'm going to burn the tapestry. Uh, yeah, so you, like, burn this tapestry. You, you know, put your lighter to, the, to its bottom. And you zap it. And from the tapestry comes a screaming, writhing mass of black ichor. That, like, you know how... When you see like, 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 uh, 
a, like water seep through the pores of a filter. Yeah. It's like So that. it's almost like venom. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a weird writhing black mass of screaming eyes and tentacles and stuff. Uh, I'm going to up the power on my lighter and uh, 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 flick it again. Roll the damage for that. All right, what's the damage on this? 1d100 and 3d100. 3d100 when targeting a paranormal target. So that would be the number. Alright. Yeah. Need one more D one hundred. There we go. Ooh. Good rolls. Good rolls. One sixty. Okay. One sixty so... and that's yeah, that's just one sixty. I don't think it's doubled. Uh yeah, when it's against demons, I believe it's doubled because it's four d one hundred. No, I think it's doubled for demons. All righty. Luckily for you, fire ignores armor. Yes. So you light like so this this thing oozes out of this burning tapestry, um, and it's like lower left half is already like singed, and it grows a new tentacle to try to like strike at you, and you just like turn the new tentacle to ash and it like falls to the ground and you light part of its upper torso if you could call it an upper torso on fire if you call it a torso yeah now we can roll initiative oh man gotta love arson (laughs) Mm -hmm. always fun always fun seven you get seven your agility is six my agility is five so you get 12. The discourse thing got 7. His agility is 4. So he gets 11. 11. Awesome, Brook. He gets a two, Ooh. which is pretty bad. I believe he has a... What's his agility when he has life's limit? Uh, seven. So he only gets a nine. Man, to think, last time, last campaign, he was on he was on par with everything. He was like the, the fast one. Uh, what does uh, X and Battlecock get? Uh, X has a 13, Battlecock 11. Hmm. Dang, Battlecock rolled really bad. He's an an 8 agility. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh boy, okay. So, up first. Alright, so X leads us off. Um, alright. So. I don't really have anything I can do. Because the one thing I can catch on this turn would probably, like, set this whole room on fire. So, and I don't have my gun. If you do it in such a concentrated manner that you only aim it at this thing, I'm sure that it would just add to the flames that it's already being engulfed in. Uh, you willing to risk that? I've already lit it on fire. Alright, your words. If he misses, like, even one of those shots, it's gonna hit the wall or it's gonna hit you or it's gonna hit you know I can come back to life that is true alright I guess I'm just gonna take six volley on this tentacle monster okay so that is so give me how many fireballs are you shooting um well it's six but I guess well, I have to roll over each one, right? Yeah. I guess to reduce potential damage, I'll only do three. Okay. So. See, now, X, if you were playing a true chaotic neutral character, then you would roll the dice and see what the dice tell you. <laughs> yeah, just roll a, roll a 1 to 6, see what number you get. 
All right, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. I rolled a five. There you go. Yeah, you're shooting it five times. <laughs> All right, so my attack rolls are, or my perception checks, I guess, are one, two, three, seven, and six. Who boy. Okay. One, two, three, seven, and six. So you make the seven and the six. The other, uh, the one is going to hit Helsin. Okay. And then the other okay. one's miss. So roll the successful ones first. The damage. 2d100 per? Yeah. I'll stand there and take it. I regenerate. I regenerated a bit anyway. So that's 80 and 90 for 170 on the thing. Okay. And then the one that hit Helsing is 100. Okay, so Helsing got 100. So he's down to 90 health. Well, no, I would have regenerated a bit. Well, you yeah. regenerate on your turn, so when you go next, you'll regen 1d4 hey. times 10. Hey, hey, let me regen that. Alright, so it's time to regen. Thirty! Okay, so you're now up to 120. Very nice, very nice. Uh, so he, like, flicks this fireball at me. Yeah. And I, like, take it off the brunt of my shoulder. But I'm not, I don't care. I'm gonna light this thing again. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna light it on fire again? I'm gonna, I'm gonna engulf this thing in flames. Alrighty, make the... Uh, like the uh, the, the fireball didn't do much. I didn't really feel it, or I didn't really care <laughs> enough. I'm too focused on killing this thing. Yeah, it took off like a third of your health, and you're just like, <laughs> lol. I don't care enough. Well, I don't it's care. I'm not. So it isn't that bad, really. And I regenerate. Uh, 170. That's 170. You do uh, manage to reduce this glob of black ichor to, to just ash. So JVH is also going to be breathing it quite a bit heavy after this encounter. Yeah. I I do I do regen that right yeah. Uh yeah. yes you do regen. Alright, so I'm back up to 120. It's gonna be all good. We're gonna move to the next room. To six room? Uh, yeah. Six. Okay, okay. Room number six is uh, an unfinished room. So the walls are very... Well, what's in it? That the walls are still kind of like dirt, and there's like some tree roots poking through. Um, there are some pickaxes and some shovels leaning against the wall over here. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There is nobody well, in here. Uh, let me roll... Up to 140. Hey, X, you want to see me be back up to full health with another hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, your well, hand is uh... regrowing, uh, but very slowly because you're still healing back from that fireball that singed your, like, chest. On well, the back. Yeah. Uh, so what do we say? Up to... 14? Over to 
14. Okay. We'll make our way. I don't necessarily trust all of this. 14 is a cafeteria. I get to roll a thing now. Let me roll my regen dice. 20 more. 20 more health. You're up to 160. Hey, look at that. You're almost healed for that fireball. <laughs> so there's, hey. Let's see. Good times, good times. Plus two, so there's six. If he had done any more than, like, 200 damage, I would have had to put him down. Oh. That's... That's quite a bit of people. It is. Hmm. I rolled, hmm. I rolled a small... I rolled a low number. I rolled a four. This is not four. I know, because it's, it's, it's um, 1d10 plus 2 for this room. I am so we open this door none over here, and we right kind of file in, and we interrupt the meal of a group of six armed cultists. Uh, I'm going to, uh, during this encounter, I'm going to put away my uh, lighter and draw my flintlock. Is there, like, a table near us? There's the main one, yeah. I'm gonna f flip that table up and give us cover. Uh, give me an agility check. Because it would okay. be pretty funny if you succeed. <laughs> Three. What's your agility? Five? Uh, this would be strength, no? Well, the agility was to, like, to get over here before the, the round starts. So the roll initiative uh, first. And if you make it first in initiative, then you can do it anyway. All right, cool. Four. Agility of five. So you get a nine. Uh, Enemies get a five. It's not going to work. Ten. Uh... So Brooke gets a, a 10, so he gets a 14. Well, he's quick this time, Jesus. What do X uh, uh, X has a 14, Battlecock 13. Now, Battlecock is not on the ball today. No, not really. Alright, so up first is Bossa Brook or X. So, whichever oh. order you want to go first, we'll go first. Well, I spend my turn uh, trying to back away from the cultists because I don't really want to get shot. And I don't really want to use more magic than necessary. So I'm going to send Battlecock out. That's my turn. Okay, so you could just, you just back up a little bit. Uh, I'm very Brooke, just playing the next right now. Boss is going to draw life's limit. Yeah, he's just gonna slice the dude he's already in melee rage with. He's gonna dodge this. He does not. Bear witness to life's limit's power. He also has. No, wait, don't forget. He also has the uh, medallion. He does, yeah. Isn't the bare hands, though? Yeah. Uh, oh, be straight. He still kills him. Uh, so Bossy Brook, he draws life's limit. He just takes a, you know, like a, a baseball bat swing this guy's throat and just beheads him immediately. Very good. Very good. And now we are up to Battlecock. All right, so Battlecock goes to the nearest, you know, not dead person. We need to roll the uh, personality. Ah, that's right. It's two. Two, so he is a martial arts master. So the nearest dude would be this one. Oh no. I think Alright. Let's see, what is he gonna do? Bicycle kick is basically an insta kill, but <laughs> pretty much, Steam, yeah. I, I think Steam has uh
It's quite literally uh, crap. I'm going to use something else for once, so I'm going to do internal rupture, because why not? Mm. Uh, he rolls a, a 7 for his check. Plus, well, what's the int of 6? I can't. I can't do the thing. I can't interact. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's see. See what's uh, the eternal rupture for the character sheet? Um, down here. Eternal rupture. Okay, sure, yeah. Alright, so that's 80 damage. 80 damage. Okay, so you, it's a battlecock, he runs up to this dude, and he just, like, takes his little feathered hands and, like, pokes him with his feet, and he yells in pain, but there is no evidence of his, uh, like, injury. He's not dead, and he is still conscious. Now we come to the enemy's turn. Great. So this dude's going to attack Battlecock. He does not have a gun, so he's just going to try to punch him. Battlecock can dodge this with an agility check, if he wants to. Okay. Let's see, that's a 5 plus whatever his agility is. Yeah, it's 8. Two. So yes, he is, he's fine. Uh, this dude misses. These two are gonna shoot at Boss and Rug. These two are gonna shoot at Helsing. So let's do those I can first right? two at Boss and Rug first. First guy, second guy. So one guy hits. One guy does 2d100 damage. He does 170 damage. Boss and Brooks. Boston Brooks. Oh, super duper health is 250. So he now has one, two, two. Basic mathematics. Minus okay. 170. It's 80. So he almost kills Boston Brook in one shot. Good time to be the glass kid. I can dodge this, right? What? I can attempt to dodge this, right? Yes, yes, you can. Aha! So let's see if they even hit you. Uh, you might just miss out, right? That guy hits, and... Nope, I locked it by accident. That guy also hits. They do both hit. That's a dodge. Is that a nine? Yeah. That's a nine. Yes! <laughs> Hmm? Yes, you dodge your rage attacks at disadvantage. So roll me. So let's go this one out of the way. Five or higher. Yeah, you still you still dodge that first one. So roll me the second one then. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go stats back up. Okay. You do not have oh. the second one. Uh, no! Come on! Hiya. You get 80 damage, so you're down to just 80 health. I hate you sometimes. You do regenerate on this turn, though. So Why couldn't you roll it better? So roll I'm gonna have to. Attack. There goes my attack. Roll your regen. Because you regen at the beginning of your turn, so... Oh yeah, that's right. Three. There's back a up to one part of gun shot. Yeah. Uh, Is it my yeah. turn now? Yes. All right, I'm gonna draw my rail lock. 
And, uh, basically just the guy that shot me, uh-huh. he's getting guy. domed with a high, with a high velocity round. Uh, so that would probably be, uh, Roll me perception. Then I'll get the 5 to 100 right That there. would be, yeah, 5. That's a six pass. Yep, so roll the damage. That's on sensitive. Yep. Wanna wait? Hundred and eighty. He is nice. very dead. Okay. Back up to turn order to Warlock Man. Get back in here now. Uh, fine. <laughs> so I guess I, I go back in. How many? How many dudes are there left? Uh, four. 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 So I'm gonna do four fireballs. Try not to hit me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. So. Alright, so that's an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 6. So, only one misses, I believe. So roll the damage for... First one is 100... Second one is 140. Dead. Third one is 200. Ooh, very dead. So only the very wounded guy fighting Battlecock is left alive. Bostonbrook, he's his turn now. He's just going to take a, a gunshot and try to shoot this dude. Put him out of misery. That's a miss, I think. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. So, Boston Rook whiffs his shot. Now it's Battlecock's turn to finish off this enemy. Alright, he got through the, the first... It's the tiny dragon! <sighs> it's time to brutalize this man. Oh yeah, you gotta roll your, your personality. Yeah. That's a five. I think that's still martial art. Is... Yep. Alright, so he's gonna make a strength check for... Foot of the Tiny Dragon, that's a 7. Yes. Fist right. of the Tiny Dragon. Like, in reality, I love Battlecock. In the game, I have to pretend that I don't. What is that? It's like 230? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you killed him by an extra 210 damage. He's very dead. <laughs> did he have ruptured organs? Yes, yes, he did. He would. I think that was what I did the first turn. Lovely. So yeah, so that's that's the end of that. Very nice. Uh, so we're gonna move right on to to fifteen. To fifteen. Okay. This is the kitchen. Oh great, more enemies. Come on. Let me roll. Only three of them though. Boop boop. Roll my regen really quick. That's true. 40. 40! Nice. Up to 100. Finally. 50. Now Boston Rug also gets to roll his regeneration. Uh, oh yeah, he's got life's limit. Yeah. What does he regenerate? Magically enhanced. 1d6 times 10. Forties. He's up to the one hundred and twenty. Okay. So Initiative? we got three more cultists to to do battle with. Uh, but we have the surprise. So 
so... So, initiative at advantage? Yeah, so whoever wants to go first pretty much can. Uh, I'll go first since I'm in the front, basically. I rolled a 7 on my initiative for when that comes up. Initiative, so uh, I have 12. I'm gonna load another round in and take a shot. Alright, make the perception check. I'm gonna roll for the initiative for Boston Brook. Ooh, hoo, hoo. it's a 14. Dang, boy. Four on perception. It's at an eight. That's a pass. So you draw your 5d100. Mm -hmm. And it'd be a 10. No, it's an 11. Ten. So you, who are you aiming for out of these guys? No way. I got more than 110. I got well more than 110. Because that's 100. That one's 40, 40, 20, 10. Oh, it's 210. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Don't shortchange me here. Aim for... Uh, what is the it? guy that my character is literally aiming at. Nice. So I, I, t I, I aim up in like a split second, take the shot, and his head just explodes. Oh, bam. Uh, okay. Uh, what did Battlecock and X get on their initiative? X12, Battlecock 16, Fast yeah. Boy. There's the Fast Boy. Mm. The difference 13 to 14 makes. Okay, so. Uh, since we are now in initiative, it's Battlecock's turn. Alright, Battlecock just runs up. You know, roll for personality. Uh, uh, that's a three. Martial artist. Yep, martial artist. Alright, and. You know, I want to put. Fear into these guys. Or like the one dude who's remaining. There's two dudes that are remaining. Uh, let me see. Uh, how do I uh, round cheat? I'm gonna bicycle kick. Because <laughs> why not? All right, that is by far one of the more effective moves that we've seen. That's yeah, that's ridiculously effective. Oh wow, that's only one plus two, so he only kicks three times. Rest in peace. Uh, let's see. That's 50, 60, 60. So, 170 damage. Yep, he is. This dude, also, big dead. And now we come to Warlock Boy. We um, one poor soul left in this room. I taunt him. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> That's does my this, turn. Does this require him to make a sanity check? Well, it depends on how he wants to taunt him. Well. Hmm. I'm going to start raving about the, the Catholic Church. Oh, my... God, uh, yeah, I'm mean, sure why not. <laughs> insinuating that both he and his mother are devout followers of Christ. Oh, oh, no, that's for sure, for sure. Uh, it's a fail. Uh, I'm gonna roll a one d four. This is this, this is the classic quest for the core board game one d four suicide roll. Let's see what he gets. That's that's cockeyed. Doesn't count. Let's see what he gets. Three. I believe that is he's petrified in fear and is stunned for how many turns? Three turns. So he's so you use you, you insult this man and tell him that both him and his mother are devout followers of Christ. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. He and he's so wide, he launches into a massive, uncontrollable tirade of uh, denial. And insult the Catholic Church that he physically cannot move for three turns. Oh my god! So, uh, actually, 
up the turn order because it's Malakox turn again. I'm not even going to. Wait a minute. Well, because you had. Well, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, so it's JVH. How are you gonna finish? Wait a minute here. You you tried to change me out of a turn. I did, yeah. Uh, no, 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 that's not happening. Story Weaver. <laughs> so you're gonna assault this man with a, with a sword? While he's while he's in this tirade of insulting the Catholic Church, saying that I'm not a follower of them, uh, I'm going to just walk over, draw my sword, and plunge it into his chest. Alrighty, that would be a what's that's two D one hundred damage. Well, is he paranormal? No. Then, uh, yes, 2d100 times 2 against miscellaneous paranormals. Yes, yeah, so it's 2d100. He, he can't die yeah, because he's too busy rambling about the Catholic Church. Can we have some, like, deep-seated lore here that his mother was a devout Catholic? <laughs> in, in, in secret, she was. No, not in secret, outright. She would, like, beat his ass whenever he tried to talk about anything else other than Catholicism. Too real. <laughs> Too real. Too real? This man uh, had a damaged childhood. That one. Oh, That's good. Oh, demon cultist. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Alright, well, 60 and 70. 60 and 70. He is big dead. His final words being... He's like... Uh, definitely to the Catholic Church. No, I was gonna say... The aristocrats. <laughs> his, 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 his final word is, uh, down with the papacy, and then he just dies. <laughs> <laughs> that was the nice, uh, nice reference you threw in there. Yeah, that's, the papacy. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Damn Great. papists. He was a Protestant the entire time. They bested <laughs> me again. <laughs> There's, there's like a whole backstory there. Yeah, that we you could interrogate uh, him, and you could have, you know, he, he could, you could have uh, used him as an enemy of the church. But no, you decided to stab him through the chest instead. <laughs> I, I, I'm just well past bargaining at this point. They made me cut off my hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, bargaining. Oh wait, it's my turn, so I gotta, I gotta roll regen. Hey, 40 more. My hand is now about the size of, well, a child's hand. Yeah, it's a Deadpool hand. A small infantile hand. Yeah. Alright. Is this, is this, like, detrimental to anybody else in the party? I mean, compared to what we've seen recently, like, a grown man throwing an infant's hand on top of his adult-sized stub of a wrist is not that new. <laughs> like, for one thing, X is insane. And also, Boston Brook has known you for, like, a pretty long time at this point, so... He's probably seen it. Ah, good. Okay, so no one goes insane just yet. No. So, uh, yeah, we're from here. Uh, we're gonna go into... Can we enter here? Uh, you don't know it exists. Ah, grand. So we're just gonna go right into 27, then. Right into 27. Oh, great. Fa oh, that my oh, that's insane. Oh, okay. boy. Sure. Sure. Why not? Let me... Let me... Before, before, before you do anything, my regen. And then Robosimus awesome regen too. Ten. Ten. Two hundred and twenty. Ten more health. health. How much? You have two hundred twenty. Two twenty. Right. He has. My hand is slowly but surely coming back. It is. Now I need to roll 1d20. 
Oh, joy. 12. Oh, my God. Je Jesus. Okay. All How right. many are there? 17. You to, you're going to have to that me. Oh, my God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And... You have to be kidding me. And... There's also... A mini boss. Here. Oh my god! There we go. <laughs> so, we walk in... Um, to this room. And there are, like, pews in here. And, uh, at the far end is a, uh, a really charismatic looking guy in dark red like crimson robes with a book that is leaking black ichor, uh, and he is giving a sermon. Uh... Now, I'm gonna do this way? thing to prevent us all from being murdered. Uh... Right. Is there a way to, to just walk back out of the room? I'm gonna check that right now. Ah, uh, perfect. I have not seen you yet, Ross yet. So we're we can. So we can we're leave. seen. We we are not seen. We it's like it's like only only you poked your head through, so. And then I like, back myself up back against the corridor. Yeah, you're like, oh no. <laughs> and then I like push everybody else to the wall. Yeah. And I'm gonna point back down the corridor. <laughs> so we all uh, walk back into the kitchen where a small firefight just broke out and they did not hear it. Keep that in mind. <sighs> Don't go down that way. X? Do you have yes? Anything that can take mass amounts of people in a short amount of time. Um. I need a lot of stuff, actually. I suppose I could. There's one up front giving a sermon, and there's about mm, almost eighteen in the pews. There's exactly seventeen, but close enough. Well, well good luck. Are they all? Like clumped up or spread out, because that changes. Pews. They're all clumped Wooded up. Pews. For the sake of ease. Yes. Well, I could put a barrier in the doorway. I could throw a bomb in there, or I could create like vacuums. Across the room. Whatever kills the most people in a shorter amount of time. Well, are they all within 10 feet of each other? Because that changes which one of these options is more effective. Uh, well, I would assume that the people in the pews, which is who we're going for, are all within 10 feet of each other. Well, no, they're... So they're, they're in a 4x4 a four four square... Well, yeah, but that's a 20 by 20 foot square. So they're kind of like, like they're kind of spread out. So like the, let me see, the IRD, which is 2 by 2 by 2, uh, would hit four of them. That's what I'm saying. At a time. Now what you could do, uh, you could put up a seething barrier in the doorway, toss an IRD in there, which would probably kill four of them. A bunch of other ones rush into the doorway. They hit the wall of magical glass, and then they explode. And that'll take out a couple more. Well, I suppose... What I do... How many of these things can I concentrate on at once? That's an excellent question that I had not answered. Therefore, the answer is all of them. <laughs> okay, then... I guess I could do a barrier, and then... Well, the... we don't want to take out the guy up front that's giving a sermon. 
Well, I could do this. I could do a barrier. I could do columns, and then they get sucked in towards the columns and the barrier. Ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Uh... All right. Let's see. The ceiling barrier, an endurance check, and the and 10 seconds of preparation is all that takes. So. Mm-hmm. Give me the endurance for that. Uh, that's an eight. That's a pass. So is this this thing can be up to four squares in width or length. So you could like block off half of this place with a barrier, or you can just put it in the doorway. Hmm. How much do you want, Helsing? Well, we want to preserve the guy up front giving this sermon. So, probably just blocking the doorway. Probably. Okay, so you block off the doorway with a, a magical shimmering pane of glass. And then you want to draw the, them in with the column of flame, right? Uh, yeah. How many of those is there? Uh, um, I believe it's one. And then, like, they get sucked in to wherever you put the column of flame. Alright. So, I guess I'll put... The column at the back of the pews, probably. Okay. Mm. Sure. Ooh. Poor roll. I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> so you. Oh. Have... oh. <gasps> yes. Yes. Now, oh this could no. Be, this could be really, really great. This could be really bad. So I'm gonna get uh, a dice. Roll one d ten thousand. I hate here. you so much. One I hate 10, you 000. so much. What did you get? Let's see. Roll. Three thousand one hundred and eight. Let's see, let's let's see what this is. Three thousand. Oh my God. One hundred. I went too far. Three thousand one hundred and eight. <laughs> okay, sure. All right. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make an. Okay. All right. Cool. <sighs> uh, you cast this. We'll try to cast this spell, and all that comes out of your like arm your hand is like a, a tuft of like glitter and uh something happened but you don't oh. know what it is oh my god okay it's been an effect but I, I i can't tell you what it is until the other condition is met so something will happen probably this 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 battle uh but you don't know what it is so glitter just comes out of this man's hand. Yeah, he he miscast. So uh, he fails the the magic thing. Can I try to to recast the same spell? Uh, with an intelligence check at disadvantage, sure. Because I know how to cast magic, and I can do symbol uh, symbol casting. And let's see here. I know spell creation. Okay. So give me a time to get disadvantage to try to replicate this spell that you just watched him do. My okay. Uh, this is not good. Okay, there we go. Give me a second here. I need to. 
It doesn't really even matter what I rolled. No! So your intelligence is nine, right? Yes. So you managed to replicate this spell. Uh, this one. Oh, only, thank God! It's only a one-time. Like you, like you, you, you don't ha get this spell forever, but you can do this one time. Okay. So that requires an endurance check, I believe. Uh... Yes. For every turn of continued use. So, uh, what are the cast conditions? Uh, I'll read them off to you. Creates a column of flame, drawing enemies into it over time. So it's enemies in one square every turn, but every turn they exist, they can't move. Uh, if enemy is sucked in, it does 4 d hundred damage per turn of exposure, and requires 2 turns of preparation, which is, like, a void in this case. And an endurance check for every turn of use, uh, cools down to 3 turns, but that's what doesn't apply because you can only use the spell once anyway. So, okay, so I'm going to make this. Uh, I'm going to make this last about four turns. Sure. So uh, once your turn comes around, you roll a new endurance check. So okay. where do you want this thing to be placed? I'm going to try to find a token to. Demon. I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to ask X. Uh, where were you going to place this? Towards the back of the pews. Okay, so like right back here, right? Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, uh, make my first endurance. I'm really trying to pull a clutch move here. Two. Your endurance is what? Mm, seven. <laughs> oh, boy. So you also cannot... Well, hmm. uh, make me, make me uh, a check. Make me, uh, make, me, make me a luck check. I made it off. I was able to cast it. Yeah, let me, let me see. Uh, what's your luck? Four uh, luck of five. <laughs> you can, you do cast this spell, but it does half damage. Okay, I'll so take what, it. What, what, what I'll square, take it. What square specifically do you put this this thing on? Uh, the square that I put this on is... Yeah. It's going to be specifically... To create as much chaos as possible, it's going to be this one right here. That one? Okay. So, this cultist instantly takes 2 D100 damage. Right off the bat, immediately. Okay, I'll take it. He's dead. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, Alright, so, you peek your head around the corner, uh, being very careful not to actually touch the glass pane that's now here, because if you touch it, it'll explode and kill you. Um, mm -hmm. So you... Oh wait, do I, do I regen? Uh, yes. Okay, give me, give me the second. Do oh, that. Well. 30. 30, you have to 250. I have to do this for four turns, though. This, uh, well, you this cast. You just be at max health at that point. It's mathematically impossible for you to not be. So you're max health. And I think it's hey. as well. I need to do this cast for three more turns now. Yes, so. Uh, you pick around this corner. You can create a column of flame. And it, like, it, 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 it erupts from... So it's like it's like a circle of molten, uh, like stone floor tiles appears as this like ring of magic, like a you know, and I saw like a particle accelerator just zoops around this space, and after a couple seconds, like ten seconds of uh, this like zipping around circle of molten rock, a gigantic column of flame erupts and totally melts that poor sucker. Died to the bone, and uh, okay. yeah, this column of flame like licks at the the ceiling tiles, and now uh, roll initiative, I guess. All right, well, I'm gonna be stuck doing endurance checks, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, well, you can't do other stuff on top of that. You can do this like moving stuff, but so you got five, ten.
What did X and Battlecock get? Uh, X got a 5, and Battlecock got a 13. 13. Dang. Alrighty. So... Up first is Battlecock. Mm. We can't well, do too much with the barrier there. Yeah, I don't think Battlecock can really do much. So. End turn. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we can. So we're just going to have to pass a turn until the enemies can break the barrier, essentially. Basically. So, well, you guys have to pass your turns. I have to make endurance. Yeah, so. Let's see. It goes Battlecock. This is JVH. Okay. Yeah, so make your make your okay. other endurance check then. Okay. Oh, let's go! Alright, so it returns to being full strength. So you re, re you redouble your, your focus and the column of flame it grows in strength and size and heat and uh, begins to suck in the people so it's now their turn it so took me it took me the one turn to like yeah. get it down and like get a feel for it so all 16 of these guys uh now get dragged a square into this thing which means that all of these guys that are adjacent to it instantly take 4200 damage uh oh my <laughs> god so because you used this ability in the best way you possibly could have hoped to. Um, yes. Which is good. First time that you've seen the proper spell being used. So let's see how many yes. of these people die. Alright. Oh wait, I was going to roll them. Cultist number one. Let me roll them. Very dead. Let's have some fun here. Oh. oh. God damn it. One, two, three, four. There you go. No! Alright. One ninety. Very dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got six more to roll. Uh, let's see. Guy number three. He gets one eighty. Oof. 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 Guy number four. He gets one twenty. Very dead. They get 160. Very dead. Yeah. 150. Very dead. <laughs> oh boy. Good God. 290. He's very dead. I'm talking like super dead. And then <coughs> last guy, 230. Also very dead. Now, <laughs> these guys each get dragged a square closer. Oh my god. We have now whittled down. So, and this dude technically moves forward, uh, but he's going to move anyway. So... He's going to move. What? How far can he move? He's still in the of six. So he can move one, two, three, four, five. Hits the thing. That does one d one hundred damage. He takes sixty damage. Uh, so he's down to this number. Cool, cool. Uh, and all of these guys can also still technically move. But these five are stuck. So mm. These three can still move forward. Mm. But you've got the bottleneck pretty hard, so. So, all right. uh, led by the, the leader, uh, who is, you know, singed a little bit as he 
like straight up sprinting through this paint of glass. Uh, he now faces down all of our compadres. I'm gonna. To... Uh, oh wait, it's Battlecock, right? It's Bossabrook. Bossabrook. Uh. He's gonna take a step back, and then shoot a gun at this guy. <laughs> Why? Why are you taking a step back? Brooks, it is. Oh yeah. Five. So he misses. I, I, I very much question your methods. So now we're back up to Oh yeah, leave the person ca currently casting in front. So there's been like two turns worth of like in between. So, X, if you wanted to use those to prepare something else, you can feel free to have done so. And it, like, I also easily. need to account my... Um... Okay, even prepare. Like, all the deals are getting sucked in, right? Uh, they're... The five guys are getting sucked in, and then three, like, minions, and then their, like, leader are charging us down the hallway. On my next turn, it's gonna be 40 health. You're already maxed. Oh, wait. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. That can go away. Yeah. Um. I guess I could prep Red Circle. What's that do? Uh, it forces them to stay in place, because otherwise they'll take a lot of damage. Well, force these guys into Red Circle. These guys that are in the hallway. Also, love, love, love the reference. Yeah. Red circle. Flame of flame, run a singular enemy, charge them for six turns. Okay, so one D6 turns. Uh, are you going to target one of the minions, or are you going to target the leader? Target the leader. Target the leader. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to do anyways. Okay. Target the leader so he's not a threat, so we can avoid him. So, we need him alive. The one D6. So, give me an intelligence check for that. Nine. That's a pass. Then the 1d6 for duration. <laughs> One. Well, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, uh, why do we leave you up to casting? Why not leave me up to casting? <laughs> I mean, you've had every opportunity to. Yeah, but I didn't know all of your spells until now. Now we really don't need you. He temporarily knows one, so... One of, like, 14. <laughs> <laughs> because he's ridiculous. Um, this random Mahjong thing will denote his red circle. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> Instead of just making it. Exactly. Hold on. Hold on. Indeed. Instead yeah, of drawing yeah, ancient Eldritch symbols, I just write in Chinese. Exactly. Oh, um, that works, I guess. I mean, I like the Mahjong better, but, you know. <laughs> I'll, keep the, I'll keep the Mahjong for myself. Oh. Then. <laughs> it's alright, Mahjong no, no. style. I still love you. Oh, okay, bye. Can you just grab my zombie, man? Nope. So grab my random zombie. Do you want my Mahjong cube? Here's my Mahjong cube. Yes! JVH has the Mahjong cube. Alright, so you red circled that guy. Okay, so he can't move. That brings us to Battlecock. So, uh, let me roll for personality first. Yes, please. <laughs> Damn it. I can die. That's a seven. Seven, that's a martial arts master. Alright, so. How many personalities dudes... does Battlecock have? We have Three. 27, technically, but. Really well, 27, much. technically, but like 25 of them are all count as the same one? Yeah, just for ease of, like, my sanity. <sighs> if, if you I do have a D6. Them, I can, like, we can do you that do too. realize. 
you do realize I have a D60. Well, yeah, but I don't want to have to come with individual like abilities for 25 different martial arts styles. <laughs> His move list would be like 70 different things. And? I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> name one of them like a random like like if you wanted to name the chicken or if you wanted to name one of the martial arts masters or like the so can, i can like have like a, like a different npc personality for that i can do that but i don't want to have like different different abilities for 25 different martial arts masters. so okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna which which number did you roll seven. seven which is a martial arts master Okay, so so the the martial arts master that he's tapping into is called Zhu Kok Wei. <laughs> Lovely, Master Zhu Kok Wei. Anyways, he is a master of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> but he's, he's like Chinese. I I had I had a random uh martial arts generator up, and I hit I hit randomize. And it said Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So. Nice. Alright, so. Yeah, so. Jiu Kok Wei. Alright, so Battle Clock moves to intercept one of the people okay. moving down the hallway towards us, and he's gonna foot of the tiny dragon. Lovely. Oh, that's a five. That should be a pass. Okay, let's see. How much damage? 3D100. Well, that's only 70. Wow, okay. Now we need to make a check for if he's unconscious. He is kind of cocked out, basically. Let me see. Oh, re -roll. Re -roll. He's still conscious, okay. Wow, Battlecock didn't kill somebody first turn. So... Hey, I rolled really low on dice. Yeah. Uh, who's up next? JVH, make your next endurance check. <sighs> Nice. Yes. So it's still going. You can still, still going strong. like move if you wanted to, I guess. I'm gonna I'm gonna move me and my Bajan Q. Right here. Alrighty. Dip now you on some cover. To the enemies. So these five I should probably make have to make a check. To resist being pulled in, um, because having every single person get pulled in one square is pretty ridiculous. Um, but yeah, you know what? Let me let me just double. I might change that in between sessions next time. But uh, let me see. <laughs> just be, just for like realism's sake. Um, but for now, all these guys take four D one hundred damage. Hey, hey, hey. So roll that for me. Doing X's job better than he does. Well, he did trap the leader. So the leader can't move. I was supposed to die. So. I know what you're talking about. I killed on mass with my fireball. I just rolled 210 for one of them. 210? Dead. Uh. Got. 150. Dead. We got 160. Dead. And we got 230. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he's very dead. Uh, one more, he said? Yeah. And we got 160 again. All right. Now I need to pose a question to, uh, you know, the plenary. Because the, the, the big ha head honcho, because if he moves from that square, he takes damage. And he's being sucked in by the column of fire. Would he set off that trap? Like, like... 
he's well, not in make line it of sight. The board. But I don't know how. He's not in line of sight. So you, he would get sucked in then. So I would assume that if he's not in line of sight, then it wouldn't really affect. So him. the direct text is any movement causes them 2d100 damage. If they leave the circle completely, it's 4. Ah. Uh, okay, so he's not in line of sight. So I would say he's still okay. Because he's not in line of sight of the, the flame anymore. But yeah. These three guys are. So they're not dead yet, but they're getting there. Um, this one guy... Mm. Actually, their only target is Battlecock. So... That is true. Now, that is very true. Armed with guns, but they do have knives. So we've got, we've got three melee attacks against Battlecock. He can dodge, right? Yeah, he can dodge this. Roll the seven to dodge the first attack. He is dodged the first attack. How many more attacks are there coming at him? Nine, like two? two yeah. So that's a nine. Pass. And that's a two. That's agility of eight. I don't know if that passes or not. Two is a match, which means that I choose whether I hit or not, pretty much. Um, I'll say that he Wait, dodges it. He has the passive. He has the passive. Wait, he does the passive? What's the, what's the pass? Magnetic friendship? Yeah. You can't harm him. He has, he has an ability of magnetic friendship, but he can, he can use two for cast on his body. Uh, yeah. I, I add that ability so he can, like, choose to make somebody his friend. It's pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah, so he, he does dodge all Could three. Could do that. So Battlecock, he's just in the middle of this circle of dudes dodging their knives as they, like, try to, like, stab at him. He definitely, definitely avoids each of their attacks like a, a true masterful... Uh, martial arts. Shin Kakwe. Yeah, Shin Kakwe. And that brings us to Boston Brooks' turn. Now. He can't get past this guy. Or they get trapped in the circle, right? Well, he wouldn't get turned in the circle, but if he moved past this guy, this guy would technically move and would set off the trap anyway. So Bossom is going to try to shoot the guy at the end of the, the corridor. He does hit. That's cocky. What's he get? 120 damage. So he does kill one of the three attacking Battlecock. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So. Now we're up to. Now. We're up to X again. Mm. Wait a minute. Um. Okay. I don't think there's much go. I can really do. Isn't I'm not sure if I want to. After Boston Roof? You were oh, wait, no. you were before the enemies. I was at the top of the turn order. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. I mean, you can. Yeah, not much. Just gonna wait for Battlecock to kill these. Uh, I don't really want to shoot off a volley. It's like the hallway. So the only thing I would really want to do is like extend Red Circle if I could do that. Um. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I would, I'll make that an endurance check. Do, 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 do. Wow. That's a one. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you, uh, make me, uh, actually. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna roll another D10,000. <laughs> oh my god. Because I guess it's a magical roll. Let's Blame see. the dice, not me. Oh. oh, you're so close to getting, four, to getting 420. Dang it, you got 4,220. Okay. 
4,220. Let's see. 220. You get... <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me 2d10. Oh, God. I feel like this is going to be bad. Uh, three and a four. Uh, bright flames surround the leader of the, uh, the, the cult, uh, like, 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 orbit him. Like fairy fire, almost. But they don't seem to be doing anything to him. Okay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, right. that's, um, that's literally what what the, the the thing is it's bright flames surround the target harmlessly uh for 2d10 rounds so yeah that's a thing now well uh since no one can get past him uh i'm done casting right uh if you want to be you can keep making checks to keep keep it up yeah well i can suck these guys in well, very slowly. <laughs> I'm not not sure. I'm gonna make the endurance check and then tell someone else to interrogate him. Never mind. I'll stop casting now. Uh, D ten thousand, yay! The magic of getting really bad rolls. <laughs> uh. You got. Let's see. What does the website say you got? A nine uh, oh, nineteen thousand three hundred and ninety-five. <laughs> Did I do that right? I don't know. No, I added nice to zero. I better explain it. My God. Okay, go. Roll a die. D ten thousand eight hundred and fifty. Let's see. Eight hundred. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you suddenly feel as though you are walking through knee-deep snow. Uh, okay. <laughs> but you're not. You just feel like you're okay. Not. Okay. Uh, and then the spell ends over here. So yeah. So like, is my movement impeded? Um. It doesn't say it is. Okay, cool. So I just feel like I'm in snow. Yeah. My legs are a bit chilly. I was going to say how long it is, so I'm just going to roll a number. D10. Yeah, roll a, a D10. Uh, I got two turns D10. for that. So for ten seconds, you feel like you're... My legs walking. are cold. Yeah, you're feeling like walking through deep, deep snow. Um... Oh, the bottom, like, and is it cold in here? Yeah. Um, I mean, realistically, I don't think we have to have Battlecock individually fight these last two cultists because they're gonna die. There's no way. They're gonna <laughs> die. Like that. This. Yeah. So we'll just end combat and, for fluff's sake, right. say that Battlecock brutally murdered those two people, but we never see it. It's like off-screen deaths. But you just see like blood and it's you're screaming and stuff in the corridor. Yes. <laughs> and now this all, only person left alive, minus us, is the leader trapped in this glowing red circle of demonic sigils. Uh, so I'm gonna walk over and begin to interrogate him. Uh, Not walk, breaking the red circle, you but very weird because just you outside of it. Very, you, you deep snow. Um. I feel like I'm yeah. walking through knee deep snow. My movement isn't impeded. My legs are just cold. Uh, yeah. So you you walk over to him, but don't break the circle. Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna ask him to tell tell us what we want to know. And what do you want to know? Uh, what's going on here? First of all. How suicidal do I this man feel like being today? Because he might uh, do a thing anyway. Not very? Not very? Pretty suicidal. God, 
not quite Damn enough it. to like actually kill himself. Um, well, what's he gonna do? He can't do very. Can much. anybody? Can anybody cast the spell of freezing? I don't think so. I literally only know fire magic. Well, time to try. There's a first time for everything, and there's always a time to learn. So I'm going to try and cast a spell of freezing on him. Uh, roll intelligence with disadvantage. Seven. And then the three, so your three your intelligence is what, nine? Yeah. So you do manage to magic it's instantly come up with some frost spell. Well, this would probably be uh, alchemy, so I like, clap my hands together and then put one on the ground. And then, uh, sure, make me an endurance to determine if you can do this. Look at a one. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's go! So you freeze him in. So it freezes, it freezes everything up to uh, his collarbones. So for five turns, he is frozen up to his collarbone. Can X take off the red ring? Uh, yeah, he can. Going, it will. Alright, uh, do that. Dispelled. Alrighty. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, so, we're gonna go right up to him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flick him in the face. And I'm gonna tell him, alright, well, for the next 15 minutes, you, we've got you where we want you. Now spill it. Do you want to know what's going on in, like, this place? Uh, in general. I want to know what's going on. Um. He says, uh. So, first of all, this dude looks absolutely irreparably insane. He, he is, um, bald, and he appears to have carved intricate, like, runes into his like bald head okay and he is like his eyes are wild and he's for sure totally bonkers uh and he i'm gonna, I'm gonna... Question, and he uh turns to you like his like, head to you and he just like yells like ah the winds of change like, uh, are here of... uh they blow in our direction heathen uh i'm gonna give him a stern slap not enough to damage him but just to get his marble sorted Sure, you smack him. Uh, I am then going to like. Are his fingers like open? No, they're 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 frozen with everything else. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my sword and just make a pinprick in the back of his neck. Sure. I will do this a thousand more times if you do not tell me what I want to know. Um, how can I, how can I say this? Um, um, like, I'm going to slide the sword in a bit and yeah. then pull it back out, like just in the muscle tissue. So he yells in pain. Um, and this is going to be my sadistic nature coming out. Actually, I'm going to put the timer on. So I'm going to say you have what's three minutes. You have 180 seconds to get this target over with. Oh, I can paralyze him. Can? Yeah, if I place a correct strike on his neck. Well, yeah, yeah, you could. Actually, I think Battlecock has an ability that does that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really does. So if one don't work, one no, don't work, the other will. I can sever his spinal cord at the base and paralyze him from the waist down. Or you could hit his brainstem and kill him instantly, but you know. <laughs> well, no, that's at the lower spine. The brainstem is at the top of the neck. Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm saying his spinal cord, I meant. Ah. I mean, you could, but you've got two minutes and 30 seconds before he breaks free of his uh, magical ice. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do exactly that and like pierce the bottom of his spinal cord. Okay, make me an intelligence check. Let's try and see if I can get that properly. Let's go. Alrighty. So yeah, so you you stab him through the, the, the sheet of ice that covers his most of his body. Surgically. Yeah, and I just... paralyze him from the waist down. Yeah, so you you do that, and uh, the the ice falls apart, but he is very much paralyzed. Very good, very good. Uh, so I'm going to uh, make a radio call out to the uh, JPCU and SCP guys. Sure. Uh, and I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going to ask for a status report. Uh, they tell you that, like, nothing has changed since... Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call them up and tell them, all right, get a containment unit down here. We've got one leader in custody. All right. He is paralyzed, so take him away. Lock him up. Sure, you, uh, you tell them about the, the leader that you've got in custody. And yeah, yeah, they're like, okay, yeah. Sure. Is he just like crying frantically on the floor? Yeah, he is in in tears. He's in crippling pain. Um, literally, you know, pun intended. Uh, you've crippled him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he is just babbling incoherently. Uh, make me a luck check. Can I disarm him before he gets the chance to stab himself? Oh, let's go. Well, he has that weapon on him. He just has his bare hands. He's a magician, so. Okay. Uh, let's go. Ten on luck. Okay. Yeah. He just he babbles and coherently. Nothing happens. He's, he 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 like starts uh, like praying to, uh, whatever. Like uh, actually, yeah. He uh, you hear him yelling, um, calling out to presumably his god uh, and he calls his god the soul variable interesting I look to Jason and I say is this guy a magician or a mathematician I can't tell right now I'm not sure the answer is yes <laughs> may surprise you <laughs> the answer may surprise you uh, I'm going. Wait, to... I know what to do. I I like quickly like I lightly kick the guy to get his attention, and I lean down and I ask him. So tell me this: what is two plus two? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, make me a charisma check. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> that's a that's a five, but I don't think I'm very charismatic. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Uh, Charisma four. Yes, you fail. So you ask him, "What's two plus two? And he looks up at you, and he goes, um, "All numbers are meaningless. There is no change. There is, uh, there, there is no safety in your mathematics. Uh, only the sole variable can save us from the inevitability of change." No All right, well, with that, I'm going to pick a battle cock, and I'm going to place him on the cultist's face. Why? Okay, <laughs> you, you place battle cock on the cultist's face. The battle cock has more charisma than I do. <laughs> you, want, you want battle cock to try to use magnetic friendship on this guy? Hell yeah. All right, whatever. Let's do stuff for that. Let me find it. Uh... Magnetic friendship. Uh, one intelligence check for the victim at disadvantage. Okay. Let's see. Right, two. This guy doesn't have that good intelligence, so he is now brainwashed into thinking that Battlecock is his best friend in the whole world. 
for two combat turns. So ten seconds. He believes that this this chicken is like his dad. Father, father, father help! You're, you're the coolest animal in the world, chicken. Father, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> so I I go to Jason and I point the battle cut and point to the dude. And I'm like, ask away. Tell me what I want to know. Uh, the weird priest guy. Uh, looks at battle. Looks at you. Looks back at Battlecock. Looks back to you. It goes. Well, what do you want to know? <sighs> Where did all of this start? Uh, a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. No. Um, he just kind of stares off into the distance for a second, and he uh kind of like snaps out of his charts after a couple of like seconds. He turns back to you, and he goes, uh, it started long before I was born. Well, what are the origins of this variable deity? Uh, you ask him that, and that sends him back into his original tirade, where he's just kind of like, uh, the soul variable has always existed and will ever exist. All things are changed and those that are stagnant will die in the unholy flames of our Lord and Savior, the soul variable, yada, yada, yada. You know, other deity from some far off realm of the universe and we're going to summon him and make him kill you all. Well, looks like that's about all we can get from him. We'll wait for this containment team to get down here and they'll take care of him. In the meantime... Uh, where is that book he had? Uh, it's, like, attached uh, by, like, a chain to his, uh, like, hip. Oh. But you can, like, remove it from the... the you can just, like, untie the chain from it around his waist. Okay, I'll do that then. Alrighty, you now have an, a book of Eldritch Secrets. <laughs> Congratulations. Good find, good find. So I turn back to Van Helsing and I'm like, so you got like a like a Ziploc bag for this? I'll pull out one of my containment bags and hand it off to him. Alright, so do, does X want to keep this or are we going to give this to Helsing or what? Uh, I'll hold well, I want to take a look at it first, you know. Uh, see what's in that here. That's a bad idea. I'm already insane. Yeah, it's not like you can go wrong. It's already literally insane. It was spewing black ichor. I'm not concerned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It was spewing a material we, we know can, one, come alive, two, move between dimensions, and three, can create monsters. And you're like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You know what? He wants to, he wants to have this book spew out black ichor everywhere. He can deal with the consequences then. I am not getting involved in this next combat if it if it results in that. Uh, so you look through the book, and you see that it is essentially a like prophetic, like testament, um, slash spell book. Uh, which leads you to ooh, anything interesting? Ooh. As far as spells go, uh, spells, yes, you get. There's um. There's a, there's a, a curse, just like, like a, a, hex, a hex, that uh, makes the target get disadvantage on all their, ch their checks for a certain amount of turns. Um, there is one where you receive a glimpse of the future. There's a spell called Ray of Sickness, which is just Ray of Sickness. Um, and then there's Winds of Change, which is a gust of wind that does damage to somebody caught in its area of effect. So that's what you get like in a... All right. Place. Essentially. Well, I'm going to ask Boston Brook if I can borrow a notebook. Because I assume he has a notebook. Oh, yeah, he's got a notebook in there. All right, I'm going to start copying down spells. So you uh, turn to Boston Brook, who is currently playing Battlecock again, and he gives you a notebook. And you just, do you want to copy down, like, all the spells you find in this book? Until someone tells me to stop. Well, also you get the four I just mentioned, and then uh, 
I'll have to work with other ones later on. <laughs> because these these guys, the Province of Change, are an unfinished work in progress at the moment, but I included them because they'd be fun to use. Uh, so yeah, you get you get four those four spells that are kind of they they tap into some uh, Eldritch sources, but that's fine, I'm sure, right? Calling upon the I mean, it's not like I wasn't already doing that. I mean, yeah, but like now you're calling upon the forces of an Eldritch deity instead of him, so. Oh my God. But whatever, sure. Well, tomato, <laughs> tomato. <laughs> Well, you, you know, too. Once, you, know yeah, hell, was... you got Elder Shady. Mm -hmm. It's honestly the same thing. Okay. Uh, Not that really. Happens. Sure, you got you got the book of. So do you do you copy the book, the, the spells and the gear at the Hellsick, or do you keep the the book? I mean, I'm not gonna let him keep the book. I'm taking the book. And yeah, I kind of figured that would happen. That's why I wanted to write them down on a different sheet of paper. Okay, so Helsing takes the book. And then I'm gonna write down that you also have, like a a notebook full of other spells. Full of eldritch spells. I'm sure this cannot possibly go wrong. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. Uh, what what next? Yeah, what's uh, where do we go from here? Uh, well, we're waiting on the containment team. Okay, so yeah, so probably half an hour goes by. Uh. And eventually, this team of, of dudes shows up in this dungeon. And they, 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 they take the path that you took before, so they don't run into anybody new or anything. And uh, yeah. they take the profit of change uh, on a, like a stretcher, probably, in a gurney. And they take him away. Yes. Very good. Lamau, paraplegic. All right. Uh, uh, there should be one more guy down there, right, with us? Like, there's one guy... That's just uh, talking with us, right? Confirming. Like a, a foundation dude? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, he would be there. It's like, if you wanted to give him any of the evidence you have so far, you could, you could take uh, it. I'll give him the evidence, and then I'm going to tell him to uh, secure the rest. Uh, I'm going to have him bring down about five teams. So that they can secure the rest of it. Okay. Because we are a bit worse for wear at the same time. Um, I'm going to have them radio into me with any more evidence that they may find. Um, and whatnot. So, yeah. Alright, so you're just going to leave the dungeon only like half cleared out, not even? Well... We're going to leave the dungeon half cleared out, but we're going to have the information at a later date. Okay. All right. So you're just gonna I object to this. <laughs> okay. How are we going to like come into a dungeon, you know, some ancient cult, you know, line here and you're not even going to search the whole place yourself? Despicable. Look. Okay. I don't need your sass right now. I've been through enough in the past week than most of my entire unending life, okay? I don't want to hear it from you. Sounds like a little bullshit, but whatever. I don't care what <laughs> does and does not sound like a little bit of bullshit. I don't need it. Bostonbrook is in the corner petting Battlecock. Well, this goes on, by the way. So you're just gonna. Is that here? So you're just gonna leave Dungeon? For now, yes. Alright. Unless anyone has something to say about it. 
I mean, Basavruk is an archaeologist and an explorer, so it's kind of like his thing to to go into places and then like kill everything that's there. But I mean, if you think our job is done, point, then it's our job is done, I guess. At this point, we've got enough information to pursue this. I think we've got one of the biggest sources of information we will ever need. Currently on a gurney, paralyzed for the rest of his life. I mean, yeah. We played it smart today. How much well, more do we need? <laughs> we we did play it smart. Yeah. When it came to that, yeah. We played it smart. How much more do we need? I mean... You're... Yeah. Well, let me see. Let me see. Am I right? Am I right? Um... I will tell you... That you have missed something of relative importance. Uh, but it's All right, well, we'll look through a couple more rooms. We'll look through a few more rooms. How's that? Sure. Where would you like to wander off to now? Uh, from 27, we're going to go over to 23. You're 23. Well, you are going down the right direction, so there's that. So you walk through some hallways, and you come into this empty, uh, like, vacant room. It's just a, a hall with torches along the walls, and there's nobody here. Um, make me a perception check. Right. A five. You hear, uh, how do I explain this sound? Um, it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like stirring mac and cheese. I hate you. But it's coming <coughs> from, uh, not 24, 25, but it's coming from the other wall. So, wait, coming from here? No, 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 this way. Over here. I'm gonna slowly and carefully draw my sword. And turn towards the wall. It's a wall. But you do hear mac and cheese uh, being stirred somewhere. I'm gonna ask X to try and blow up the wall. Uh, okay. If you give me a couple turns, I can make an explosive. Don't you have a bomb? We got, yeah, a spell lets to make a bomb, essentially. Then make a bomb. Alrighty. Let me see what this is. Perception check to throw it. I'm not gonna throw it. I'm just gonna put it down and then walk away. Okay. So, is that what we're doing then? So you uh, take like one of like the random pieces of rubble on the floor, and you hold it in your hand, and you charge some demonic energy into this rock. And you like put it on the ground next to the wall and you step away from the wall and then uh, a few seconds later there's a big old explosion and uh, yeah there's a big mm. hole in the wall and it leads into room 26 yeah now the mac and cheese mm. stirring is like pretty loud 
Well, into 26, I'd say. You go into 26. You go into room 26, and you see what appears to have once at one point been, uh, like, the workstation or something of the uh, leader of this place. Um, but half of this room is consumed with, uh, like, just a, a, I mean, it's a portal, essentially, but, okay. uh, like, it looks, it looks, you know, like, uh, it's as if part of reality has been, like, bitten out, and, like, the ground, the air, the walls, the ceiling, the, you know, everything has been, like, in this section of this room, has been replaced with a portal, and all through that portal, you see what you saw in your dreams, and now we all of us to make sanity checks, except for X, because he's oh, already yeah. insane. So, the <laughs> whole area is a portal. Oh. Or sanity of 10. So, in my in my uh me being correct, I'm gonna turn to Boston Brook and just go <laughs> You know, actually hold on. Uh I'm gonna like I'm gonna like like gesture my hand to it and go hmm, I wonder who could have predicted that Okay. Uh, through this portal, you see a gargantuan, looks like horribly deformed uh, link of sausage, covered in mouths and eyes and tentacles and claws and heads and ears and, you know, snouts and gaping maws and leaking ichor and it's just constantly I'm gonna turn and writhing and rearranging itself and mutating there. and growing and shrinking and it's just... Very condescending. Kind of like an I told you so kind of way. Yeah. Uh, well, does this classify as a world ending threat yet? Boston Brook? Uh, as you say that, uh, the gigantic sausage link in, the, in, in space, uh, it, we know how, like, oh. a sausage has, like, the long bit, and then it has, like, the snipped end. Yeah. Well, that snipped end, up until a couple of seconds ago, was a bajillion different things at once, like everything else is. Uh, but okay. you look at it now, and there's now only a gigantic eye, and it is making eye contact with you. Uh, so I can assume, I can only assume that this is the monster. Uh, like divine is like a god. I said demonic, oh. uh, but well, divine works being, too. Seeing as we're uh, taking, seeing as your weapon, taking weapon, the lighter. Well, you're seeing as your weapon. weapon I'm taking weapon. the lighter. Sure. I'm charging that bad sure. boy, cranking it up to eleven, and <sighs> and you're gonna try to light the portal on fire. No, the eye. The eye is many, many, many light years away from you right now. I'm gonna stick my arm through then. <laughs> the eye on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I mean, no, sure. okay. Sure. I have no fear at this point. Make, make a perception check for me. Let's see what happens. Seven, let's go. You stick your arm into this portal and are instantly sucked into it. Okay. You are now floating. So you you're in space, uh, and you you hit your lighter and try to like make it shoot fire, and because you're in the vacuum of space, nothing happens. So I'm gonna hold my breath, right? Yeah. Well. And uh. Yeah, sure. That's not quite how it works, but I'll allow it. Shh. I am also a divine being, Dakota. By yeah. technical terms, 
JVH is a divine being. Well, uh, it's magically enhanced. But I am a champion. Yes. So, um, I I am basically a savior of realms. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna instead put that away, take my sword out, plunge it into this eye, and then after that, I'm gonna swim back to the portal. You are many, many light years away from this gigantic, writhing mass of horror. Um, All right, well, then I'm just going to swim back to the portal. <clears throat> you you turn around and you uh, slurp your way back into reality. Uh, <clears throat> you find yourself now covered in that black <clears throat> stuff, but it doesn't appear to be hurting you or anything. <sighs> You good, bro? I'm just gonna stare daggers into uh, X. Then Brunka, you know, Brunka, this seems to happen a lot. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think it's time to go. Uh, Bossenbrook turns to you and he goes, "Enjoy your swim, Doctor." I think it's time to go. So you're not gonna try to close the portal? If you want to live, Boston Brook, I think it's time to collapse this room and time to go. Uh, he agrees with the collapse the room part. So how do you want to collapse this room? Whatever explosives we can scrounge together. Blow up the room. It's time to go. Uh, yeah, sure, because X can make bombs forever, essentially. Get a bomb! Close the room. Well, I have a limited number of spells, but I, I can still do it like nine more times. We're not gonna, not gonna have to make like a dozen bombs to blow up a tiny. This, this, this room's only like. Make the strongest bomb you can. Throw all of equal strength. Yeah. So, how how many would it take to just like blow up the walls and collapse this room? Max like strength. Two, three. What was the actual? Yeah, two. Three. Or two? Alright, I can do that. Pretty easy. <clears throat> Alright, sure. Yeah, you do that. Uh, we all leave the room. And uh, as we leave the dungeon, the ground shakes uh, as the bombs down below go off. And part of like the the, the chapel up top in the main keep part of the floor and the ground collapses it on itself and it's all weird and you hear uh, a really high pitched super shrill scream that's simultaneously like really high pitched and really low pitched and it just sounds like really horrifying and then it's silenced immediately <laughs> At this point, I think we're just delaying the inevitable. Sooner or later, we will come face to face with this threat. This is galactic. Yeah, but, you know, you could never fight that thing, so. <laughs> You're not meant to fight it, I'll tell you that right now. I'm not meant to? No, no, no one of us are meant to fight this gigantic Undertor. Why is it there? Why every other thing is there to be a, a god to be worshipped by evil people. God. Uh so yeah, uh I'm gonna I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna get this icker stuff off of me. Yeah, so you we leave the leave the dungeon and uh, you get like a towel at and just like Wipe yourself off, and they like put you through like one of those like radiation shower things. They like scrub you down, and they burn your clothes. Gonna, and I'm give just you gonna, wash. I'm just gonna let the water like wash over me. I'm like, uh... so yeah, that's my that's my turn. Uh, Boston Brook, uh, he's just gonna. Like, demand like go to the nearest soldier and demand that somebody bring him a glass of whiskey, 
as soon as possible. <laughs> oh my god. Why am I not surprised? Yeah. So we're, we're sitting in the, the, the parking lot area, basically. Uh, the staging area. Uh, for the... The alliances. Of these, uh... These foundations, essentially, these companies. And having just... So, seen them are we gonna get them asked... Done. Are we gonna get asked, like, what we saw down there? Uh, yeah. Your handler walks up. While you're so so you're so in the shower, and he like walks up to you, and is like, "What happened down there?" I'm gonna shut off the water, like take a towel and like turn to him as I tie like the towel around my waist. I'm gonna look him straight in the eye, it's as you're gay. like a uh no, uh. <laughs> As, like, a small, like, bit of my eye flashes, like, pure black. And, uh, it, like, after it flashes, it goes back to normal. And I'm well, going edgy. tell him, uh, something that you could not ever in your lifetime comprehend. Uh, Mr. Wright, uh, like, chuckles. Uh, claps you on the back, which sounds gross because it's on bare skin, and then uh, laughs and walks away. And then, and then, I, like, and then, you like just, my you, you my can't eye... tell if he's inept or just like too afraid to recognize what? his own like entropy, but he, yeah. Uh, uh, like as he walks away, um, like my eye is gonna like like, become shaky and then flash to black and then back to normal really quick. Something is definitely up with JVH now, after going into that void. Yeah, because he wanted to... Cool. Wanted to swim to the other thing abyss of an alternate reality. Nice. And, uh, is that, is that where we leave off today? Um, sure. If anybody else has anything else they want to do, sure. Anything? Anything at all? Anything? Anybody want to do? No? I'm cool. Alright. Cool. So yeah, the camera leaves off on uh, the, the flash of JVH's eye flashing between black and normal. Well, I think, I think it, like, zo- we have a big zoom in, dramatic zoom in on like his face, and then when his eye flashes to black, the whole screen goes black, and then the credits roll. Ooh, that's that's good. That's good. That's that's a good send off. Yeah. <laughs> Something is definitely awry with JVH. Whether the team recognizes that or not uh, is up to them. I mean, even if I did rec- I think, really think I'd do anything about it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. <sighs> well, still disappointed I don't have my gun. Uh, well, thank you all for watching uh, for another episode of Quest for the Core. I am the Imperator for Codian and X. Thank you all. If you like the video, leave a like and possibly subscribe. And we will see you all next time on the next episode of Quest for the Core, the K2 horror campaign.